What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do I always send you? DJLittleRock.com. One more time, DJLittleRock.com. Check availability, get a free price quote, and maybe you can have me at your next event you know i like to party with the people the people need to be entertained let me entertain you are you not entertained ah speaking of entertained today on the program i got catazone who's catazone well you're gonna find out in the next few minutes if you don't know by now we're gonna get to talking to catazone Uh, This week's shows, uh, as I'm recording this on Friday night, I have one public show, and that's the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. It's the Video Dance Party Karaoke Jam. That's right. I said karaoke. You're the stars of the show. The the Rab in Conway, Arkansas has a full bar, kitchen, pool tables. In fact, there's a pool tournament on Friday nights. So if you'd like to make some money, if you want to try to make some money on a Friday night while you're waiting to sing a song next to me, you can try it at the Rab, Conway, Arkansas, the place to be on a Friday night. All right, uh, let's get into it with Catazone. Now, I got Catazone on the Skype, so if you're listening to the audio version of this, I encourage you to check out the video version of the, of the uh, interview of the podcast and that's on youtube.com forward slash user forward slash keys dan or just look up keys dan on youtube i know there's three different youtubes out there it's the one with the radio what logo and that's where you'll find all the different podcasts that i've been doing including the one with catazone all right let's get into it with catazone skyping catazone now I see you. It's Catazone in the house. <laughs> you looking good, man. Okay. Right. I, I'm, Appreciate I'm seeing a necklace now that has changed. The last time I saw a picture of you, it said MOS, MOS, and now it's Kada. I, I wanted to know what was the MOS about. It's, it's Keys Dan, by the way, uh, What Makes You Famous podcast, and I got Catazone in the house. But what is MOS? And then I'm sure Kata is a a, a a nickname or a shortened. What what is all that about? Well, so most MOS stands for as acronym. It stands for my own sheep. That's my record label. Um, so it's, it's we 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 consider it Moss. You know what I'm saying around here? As we call it Moss. Uh, also, the name Catazone is my my name is Shawan. It starts with a C. And uh. Kata, the Kata is kind of like it's Shawan's avalanche destroys all zone. Because when I was a younger uh, rapping start, you know, when I first started spitting, man, everybody's like, I, I would never stop. So I never stopped spitting, man. So the Kata zone was like an avalanche type thing. And I just grew with it over the years. I like that a lot, man. It, it's how, it's fun to hear how uh, the et- etymology of, of names and words and things are pronounced because everything is is made up. But thankfully, you have a creative mind where you can make things up and put them into words, into the, put those thoughts into uh, into words and it, into expressions. And it, 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 uh, it gives people a vibe and makes people kind of move and shake and think. I mean, I'm I'm listening to some of your music, and you know I'm a child of the '80s. I'm class of '86, so I'm listening, yeah, yeah. and I hear a lot of that old school ring in the beats. Are you making the beats all yourself, Catazone? Uh, no, not a lot of them. Um, it, what, what album are you talking about? I am producing. Okay. Um, I just produced on the last uh, album, Portrait of a King. I did a lot of production on that. Are you talking about the hood funk joints or? Man, I'm hearing stuff like uh, that would remind me of of uh, stuff from LL Cool J, stuff from from uh, uh, I, you know uh, uh, you know even the Rum DMC, but even before that, Curtis Blow and uh, okay. and and stuff like like uh, 
Oh, my goodness. The names are eluding me now. You know, I, I probably could have named every one of them about 35 seconds ago. But, you know, as you get older, uh, think- things start falling out of your head. <laughs> but I'm thinking about all the old school rap, you know, that that I would think of. And it was like it was always I'm the best from the east to the west. I, I got the mouth from the north to the south. But had, it sure. has hip hop definitely has evolved since then. And have, have you been yeah. through that evolution? Because you're I'm looking at your face and I'm thinking, He's a little older than the than the twenty something rapper. He's been around the block. He's got some uh, some experience. So uh, you know, tell yeah. me when did you start? Uh, so I start off. Sorry, that's my dog over there. Um, I started rapping. So so it's pretty much when you said like LL Cool J and all that. That's when I started really doing it around that time. Um, I started listening to pretty much LL Cool J. Grew up with Run DMC, and then coming into the A's, it was gangster rap. So. You know, like NWA, one of one of the biggest groups. You know, me coming from the West Coast. You know, that's that was my my following. You know, I followed that. You know what I'm saying? Easy E, Ice Cube, all that. So like, it's a mixture. So when I write and do things, when you hear songs like this, that's what came through. It's coming out my out my pores. You know, it's, it's my childhood. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you exactly right. I think you're talking about hood funk. Cause hood funk is straight up just a whole bunch of old school funk stuff. I pretty much got from like Ice Cube and and uh, who else was it out here? It's, it's so many people that was doing it at that time. EPMD, like you said, um, uh, they were just sampling funk in Parliament. And I grew up with all that. So, you know, that's a big thing. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, so you're always a West Coast guy. If you were giving somebody the the blurb, uh, who, who who is Akata Zone? If you give the people an idea of who you are, maybe the top two paragraphs of your Wikipedia page, uh, let people know about that. Uh Two words. No, no, two paragraphs. Two the top two paragraphs of your Wikipedia page. If you had to write it yourself, uh, give the people um, an idea of who Catazone is. So basically what I would say is Catazone is a young man from California, uh, Vallejo, California, raised in the 80s. Um, grew up through a child, a good child, a good childhood. Uh, some of the things were bad, just like other people. Um, also, you know, I took music on as a way to cope with certain things and I just never stopped doing it. Uh, I'm dropping out right. Um, you know what I'm saying? I just put out portrait of a King. Please go get that on Spotify, everything, all media uh, outlets, please go pick that up. Um, I just continue working. Matter of fact, I'm just, I'm working right now. Matter of fact, I'm in the lobby of the lab right now. (laughs) <laughs> safe house studios right now working so. well busy yeah. hands man you know people that create they got their minds going in all different directions i know i was listening to a, a podcast with kanye and he was just you know the, the the mind was going here and then there and you had to you had to be able to decipher part of that conversation going over here part of that conversation over there and and follow the lines and a creator man most of the creators that i've talked to always have different irons in the fire okay yeah you're the promoter you're the singer you're the producer you're making beats you're making flyers you're handing out the flyers you got to have all that skill i mean back when i first started in 86 that was my first dj and job professional dj and job it was two turntables and a microphone now so I you got, mean? Yeah. I'm now sorry. I got to have the lights. I got to make the flyer. Yeah. I got to promote. I got to, you know, I, I got to te- uh, give shout outs on my podcast about different things, you know, but it, time's it, it, it's, time's changed. It, yeah. it, it's time's changed and they expect you to do different things. Now, the Internet has helped out in that respect. Yeah. You know, anybody yeah. that knows Catazone can look up that name and you've pretty much branded that name Catazone. Yeah. Uh, you know, people could find you out there, but I want to know the man behind, the, you know, the music. You said you grew up in a in a decent, uh, you know, a, a decent childhood. You know, that's not yeah. the that's not the norm for a gangster rapper. You know, that's not usually it's ooh, I come from the hood and I gotta prove no, that I was I, I was hard. You know, and but it, there's there's different types of upbringings that give you experience. Yeah, I had, but see, my up, it wasn't my, my upbringing was good. I mean, I, I was in a single family household, a single parent household. My mom, my dad, they got, you know, my dad wasn't there. He got murdered before <sighs> I was born. So, um, live, I mean, and then like when I grew up, it wasn't, and then and I, I couldn't say that I was, I was upset. I didn't get upset until my twenties about that. Um, 
But I mean, as far as me growing up, what really pushed me was I got teased a lot in school. Um, and it was like bad, like all that bullying shit that's going on right now. Um, I got teased a lot in school. And back then it was either me going to jail or doing something to where I had to keep myself out of that. So what I did was take a liking to music. I love music because music is a universal language. I think music is a healing thing and it's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? So I jumped on the music and that's why my rhymes come out the way they do because these are things. So I ain't going to lie to you. I keep it a hundred. A lot of a lot of that shit I have done, you know what I'm saying? And then some of the stories of people that have done around stuff I've seen done and things have been done around me. But for the most part, man, I just try to keep truth in my rhymes and, and try to put something out there for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Well, life is a struggle, you know, and you got to learn whether to take those struggles and turn them in a positive way or turn them in a negative way. And thankfully, you've taken all the experience that you've had and what could have gone right. south. You know, hey, I'm so sorry about your dad early. I mean, when you first said single parent, uh, you know, I, I said same. And then you said your daddy got married, murdered. And I went, oh, well, not quite the same, you know, because I, I saw my dad for a little little bits and pieces until I was about 10. So, you know, mama raised me, you know, but you know, right. and, and that could have been bad. But she worked two jobs, three jobs, four jobs. And I do the same thing. That's what I learned from my mom. What did you learn from your family growing up in the West Coast? California and what part of California? I learned how to survive. Um, well, like I said, well, watching my mom struggle because I mean it wasn't it wasn't easy. You know what I'm saying? Watching my mom struggle, um, and and I learned how to. I learned the music from my mom as well because it was like all we had was a turntable in the house. So that turntable in the house was my my escape. You know, listening to music and stuff like that. But I learned how to. It's, it's it's a struggle. I learned it's a struggle and how to survive and get through that. You know what I'm saying? So that's stuff I took with me as far as me as well as me being a parent too. So it was just like my family taught us how to how to survive and how to struggle, how to love people, how to you know be just be humble. You know what I'm saying? So it it, it, it comes a long way with my music to where I am. You know what I'm saying? So it goes full circle. No, that's cool, man. And and you have a mom that's struggling. And, and are you an only child, or do you have brothers and sisters to bounce ideas off of? I have a sister, but my mom passed away in two thousand. So that that kind of, kind, of, kind of turned me too. You know what I'm saying? With the music, is I forgot to tell you about that. But yeah, I have a sister, an older sister. Um, she's my rock, man. Like like it's just me and her. You know what I'm saying? That's all we got, and we are tight. You know what I'm saying? Like super tight. You know what I'm saying? Real close. So. That's good. Yeah. Family is the most important thing. Those are the people that are going to back you up more than any anything else. Now you did you do have heartache, man, in your life. But, but, but you know, before two thousand, before you're a child of the eighties, just like me, I know the the greatest music ever made was in the nineteen eighties. Ever okay. Every time I do a party, uh, if, they, if people don't give me a direction on where to start, I start at the eighties and I work my way either back or forth, depending on right. how, how old the people are. And, you know, right. like I did a party on, on Friday and it was 80s hair bands and I, and I did a party on Thursday. No, uh, la the Saturday before and it was 80s hip hop. And then, you know, the mm -hmm. you know, 80s, it, 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 I mean, their country music wasn't so good. I'll, I'll tell you that for mm -hmm. nothing. But, but but the hip hop and the, and the regular, you know, the pop and the rock, it come out of the 80s. It, 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 it changed us. But you said you said you had a uh, turntable uh, when you were growing up. What was mom's uh, disc of choice? What was she putting, dropping on the turntable uh, and letting you listen to? It was due. Okay, so so I went back through her record collection like not too long ago because I kept all of them. I kept all the LPs from the 80s. Um, but it was a mixture of stuff. It was a mixture of stuff. It was from like Parliament Funkadella to Robert Palmer. Um, from Wham! to Cooling the Gang. It was just, you know, straight funk. You know, you know confunction from where we are. So she went to school with them. So it was always, you know what I'm saying? Something in the house like that. And then my grandfather was well played with James Brown what? and he went with, you know, Jimmy McCracklin and all these cats. And he was teaching me the game too, back in the day. And shout out to my grandfather, rest in peace, grandfather, Lonnie Smith senior. Um, but yeah, man, that turntable never, never stopped. So when the turntable went out of style and uh, I had to walk, man, man, every day I went through so many batteries. Cause I couldn't tell you, <laughs> 
I mean, you know, the, the people, the kids don't know the struggle, man. You know, they got rechargeable batteries, and we had to go to the store and get more, more and more batteries. That that Walkman was a staple in my life. I, you know, I had music in my head all the time, and I know the kids. They got the music in their heads, and their parents don't know exactly what they're listening to. Maybe they got some kind of zone running through their heads. You know, they got that. Oh, getting a little, a little feeling, a little inspiration. I, I, I want to do. I do want to give a shout out before I forget, and I know I won't forget. Get. DJ Immortal, he put us together, and he did mention something about the James Brown connection that you had. So that's a that's old school. That's in the blood from way back, man. Uh, it, it's been coming through your genetic uh, makeup, kind of zone. It goes so deep. Like my grandfather, he played on the Chitlin Circuit. Um, I don't, I, have you ever seen Cadillac Records the movie? I'm sure you have. Well, tell people what the Chitlin Circuit is, because those guys are working themselves to death, man. The Chitlin Circuit was like pretty much just down south from 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 club to club trying to find things, but back then it was more segregated. You know what I'm saying? So th that's what that was about. But he played with um he was telling me he came when he came to Richmond, California, and he was telling me he played with Eddie James. And Eddie James was the lady that um Beyonce played in Cadillac Records. That's why I brought that up. And um that was the thing, man. Like my grandfather always had a story for me, dude. So that's how how I also molded my story. Like, I would sit up here and listen to more than what he was saying, so I wouldn't get jerked off in the game. You know what I'm saying? So, because the older stuff happened back then, I can learn from that now, even though it's totally different. But it's still a way you can apply it. You well, know what I'm saying? Give me some of Grandpa's stories, some of the stuff that stuck in your head. What did you learn from your grandfather running around the Chitlin circuit? Oh, no, you cannot go in the white club. You got to stay in the black club. Mm -mm. I'm so sorry about that. He was just telling me, like, as part of the Chitlin Circuit, he told me that they had to go through the certain, like, a certain, they had to go through the back door. They couldn't come through the front, for instance. Um, what else was it? He was telling me, you know, they couldn't drink for certain water fountains, things like that. They got harassed when they was driving through, you know, Georgia and going back down south. Um, and that was the thing. But when he got to California, it was totally different because he had, like, a whole bunch of bands he was in. You know what I'm saying? He was telling me everything. He, I still have his old... 1940 uh, drum set. It's a three piece snare, a uh, bass, and a um, uh, a uh, cymbal. Well, and that's still that's something still the have. kids, including myself, I don't know how to play an instrument. I got at least four guitars in my house. I got a full size piano, harmonica. My daughter's playing. I'm very thankful for that. I, I can pick mm -hmm. up, I can play three chords, but you actually have a actual instruments. Do you play instruments? And when did that start? Okay. Well, in the sixth grade, excuse me, mm -hmm. in the sixth grade, um, I played drums. Um, and at the time, it was crazy thinking about it. Like, I didn't even know my grandfather played drums, but I remember wanting to play drums. So my favorite instruments are bass and drums. The only thing I can do is make beats. I am this year getting a bass because I, I just like the, the strum of it and how it sounds. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and no disrespect to the audio or, any, and the, or the regular like free loop stuff that we use. But it's just like certain instruments, I want that slide. I can't get that slide sound that I want from you know from the computer. So I'm, I'm getting ready to start on that. But I've always loved drums and I've always loved bass. So that's where my funk light came from was the bass stuff like that. Parliament, Bootsy Collins and things like that. Man, I just hold a, heard a whole podcast with Bootsy Collins. That man is outer space. In fact, uh, it, he had a uh, uh, his background on his uh, Zoom was space. And yes, he did have the star glasses on. Man, uh, uh, that's that's a cat that you could learn from from way back. And he, you know, he was playing, uh, you know, since the '60s as well. But uh, hey, yeah. w was your dad the funky drummer? Because I know, no, I, I I know that the the funky drum beat from uh, from James Brown's uh, songs has been sampled and re sampled and taken apart and put back together so many times uh, that oh, funky grandpa, drummer he tra he just, he traveled with him and yeah. he brought him to the house okay. so like we, he so what it was was i think he said in a few times like at shows and things like that and then he brought him to the house like he did shows he promoted so instead of them going to the hotel like man come to the house and they would go to the house eat dinner with them you know chop it up stuff like that you know what i'm saying like you see a lot of that, like in, in movies and stuff too. Like in the um, what movie was I watching? The James Brown movie, for instance. You could see them all shacking up together because at that time, once again, it was segregated. You really couldn't go nowhere. So you come to the house, sit here, have a good dinner, have a good meal. We go do this show. You get back home safe. That's how it was. 
Well, talking back about Bootsy Collins and, and some of the other musicians that I've heard about that were in James Brown's band, he was notorious, man. And this is like legendary. Uh, he, he, would, he would use you, put you on a record, and then fire you and, and take all the money for himself. <laughs> and that kind oh, of yeah. stuff was happening back then. I'm sure your, dad, yeah. your granddad got the run around way back when. Yeah, he was getting he was getting it too. He, you know, he told me a few times he did some shows. I think they didn't pay him for or some things like that. But he always had a good. It always was a good story with him, man. And and speaking of Bootsy Collins, he was telling me like I remember him showing me the album um, for Bootzilla, I think, and it was that. And he was showing me all these Parliament albums, and then he showed me Earth, Wind, and Fire. So when you talk about the space stuff, I'm in that too because. When I did my hood funk stuff, people don't know that hood funk stuff. I felt like I was a child of that funk era. So I called myself actually the funk child. That's just something because I, I do. I call myself the funk child. I'm working on another project. I might use that in there. It might be the title for it. But I call myself the funk child because that's where everything originated from. Whether they want to give it the love and the respect it's supposed to be, that's where it originated from. Yeah, I mean, that, that's uh, that's what creators do, man. A lot of times uh, you not only create something, but a whole nother persona gets created at the same time. How many times has Sean Combs changed his name uh, from Puff Daddy to P. Diddy to Poo Doo Doo to Poo? I, I, don't know, I, I don't know what his new name is nowadays, but all those Diddy. different personas keep coming out and changing just a little bit. And and that's and he's not the only one. Snoop Dogg has been Snoop Lion, has been, Snoop, you know, uh, the doggy dog in the pound. Yep. And there's, there's all, you know, all kinds of personas come out of their creativity. So Catazone is the main brand. That's where people are going to find you. But in that yep. brand, you might have little differences. Even country stars have done it, man. Was it uh, Garth Brooks became Chris Gaines? That was a mistake. Yeah. Oh, God, bro. I think that was a bro, mistake. Bro, I've seen that and was, I'm like, what the <laughs> hell? Uh, like, like, that's him with that black hair? You know what I'm saying? But See, that's the thing. Like, everybody has a dark side. And I'm glad you brought that up because hearing my name, you know, I, I know you've seen the J Sativa behind that, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, the J behind that, when you think of a Tupac and Machiavelli, when you think of a Shock G and Humpty Hump, that's like Shawan, Catazon, and then you got J Sativa. So, that's where that came from. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad that you you have that and you've explained that a little bit because people are going to get a little idea of, you know, anybody can listen to your music, but I want to know the man behind the music. This is pr primarily a learning podcast. Everybody has a story to tell. Everybody has ex life experiences that other people can glean from, can can learn from. And, and, you know, you've gotten to a certain level to where you're putting music out there. You're doing shows. You're, you're, help, you're even helping other people to achieve their goals, becoming a producer. And that's what we have to do at a certain at a certain age, at a certain time, once you get experiences, then you start helping other people out. And, you know, and that, yeah, that's why I got into radio back in 86, man, is to help other people out. Yeah, I make a couple bucks, but mostly I'm promoting other people. And that's what I feel like is, is like my thing. And I've always, and it's with anything, bro. It's with anything. I will help anybody out now. Helping people out, though, man, it gets you stabbed in the back. That's just the game. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really looking for a, a throwback. You know, when I help somebody out, I'm looking to help somebody out to let them get to their goal because I want to see every – I don't care who you are. I want to see everybody win. You know what I'm saying? We got enough negative in the world. I want to see everybody win. And the dope thing about it is if I never get recognition or anything for that, I know in my heart and in my spirit I had a part of helping somebody do that. You know what I'm saying? So – I've always been like that with anything in the world, helping anybody out. You know what I'm saying? So that's just how it is, man. But I do have stories, too. I do got stories to let you know about how my whole thing, how my whole career started. It was, well, let's do it. It was crazy. Like, because I heard you say stories, not to cut you off. Though. No, but, tell me so everything, stories, man. I want to know. I been at uh, uh, Vintage in Napa. Um, actually, before that, I had some footage I'm going to start dropping from 1991. Thank you. Um, and I forgot I was even rapping in 91, man, because I've been so um, But I started in 91, you know what I'm saying, rapping, and I took it serious. When I got to Vintage High School in Napa was when I started dropping my, start really taking it serious. Um, I wrote, then I came out of there, graduated, uh, fast forward, went to went to drop my first uh, album. Uh, my first album was Asylum Mixtape Volume 1. A lot of people did not get that. 
because it was just a mixtape of me trying to fill myself out. So it was like a mixture of everything. It was like the funk. It was like the new Jay Z stuff. It was like me filling myself out then, trying to see where I was going to go with it. Um, Wait, ninety one. Was it an actual mixtape? Or was it like yeah. a, a Sony uh, mini disc? I think they were trying to push those back then. Cover for it and everything. It's a mixtape. I sold the, the story about that is, dude, we pressed it up and, and the hustle, like, since it's a learning experience, like, before we could get stuff on media, we had to go sell out the trunk. So we went and got my boy picked me up at six o'clock in the morning. And he was showing me, I'm going to show you how to get this. Shout out to my brother, uh, uh, Carlos. Uh, Carlos Charlie Days, Sal Rosano, that's my boy, he's a DJ. He didn't want to show me how to get, he got me up in the morning. We made this back in the day where we had to go get stacks of CDs pressed up at a, at a location. So we were in San Bruno, then we left from there, went to a copy place and had the, uh, the inserts pressed up. Then we went and got the jewel cases. Then we went back and put them together ourselves. From there, I took that box and went to Rasputin's in the well and pretty much sold out. Um, this is making a long story short. Um, pretty much sold out there. Left back, took a lot of money, to back, went back to my boy house, got some more pressed up. We went and did that whole thing again, sold out. Then I came out with Hood Funk 2. Now, when I did Hood Funk 2, Hood Funk 2 was just me like, okay, this is funk music. This is what I grew up with. I'm finna throw this at him because I know EPMD did it. I know Ice Cube did it. I know Rodney on Joe Cooley did it. And I don't think people are remembering. It's like fading off. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It was like, it was, I felt like the funk was fading off. So I'm like, okay, let me get back in here. So I, let me put my little twist on it. So I threw a twist on there um, and did Hood Funk 2, which is like one of my best um, um, mixtapes, I think, to this day. I love all my shit, but Hood Funk 2 is just, uh, it's just, it's just out there. Um, even Hood Funk 3 got some songs on. I'm just like, you know, as an artist, when you do songs, you just, you know, you like certain ones mm-hmm. more than the other ones. Oh, yeah. So, you know, so I did all those, and then when I did Hood Funk 2, I was in a studio, um, a studio I just started. Um, my boy, Peter DeLeon, I did a studio called The Mixtures. I got over there, was doing mixing down Hood Funk 2, trying to get that done. He, um, We kind of fell out, you know what I'm saying? Me being young, and you know, high sight 2020 right now, seeing that I was I was over, you know, over, over analyzing stuff. So I'm thinking I'm hot. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking I'm the hottest one on the block. You know what I'm saying? So I need to come first. So he was mixing down E-40s, get a report card. And I'm like, bro, you know, what about me? You know, pretty much blah, blah, blah. So we kind of fell out over that because I felt like I wasn't getting the time I deserved. Um, but it was money involved. So I understand that now. You know what I'm saying? So from that point there, I w- was like, man, I'm done. I, w- I, w- I would cry, man. I-, I literally cried. And I was like, man, I got to get in the studio because I was always hungry. I- just like I am right now, I got to stay in the studio. Um, so I was like, let me go get me a stu- uh, give me a computer and-, and get it cracking. Went to Walmart, buy me an e-machine. Yeah. That e-machine, f- it, bro. <laughs> Those were big back then, man. They had, oh, a two gig hard drive. That's huge. Yeah. You'll never fill that ooh, thing. <laughs> ooh, so big, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I got that e-machine transformed it into a studio man and i remember sitting up there one day crying looking out the window like my mom told me before i before she passed away she said you know son it's best for you to have your own shit that way you can run it the way you want to make decisions for yourself and do what you got to do so i said you know okay mom i agree so i thought back to that and when i was sitting there in that window it was raining i was crying i said you know my own shit i said mos entertainment i just that's it that's it my own shit mos entertainment from then on out, that was what? I said 2001, 2002. Okay. And that's where MOS jump, jumped off, man. And ever since then, you know, I, I I just been dropping stuff. And the first song I dropped when I did MOS is a song called the MOS song on Hood Phone 2. And that's a sample from um, Roger and Zap. Well, I'm trying to get so, the timeline yeah. down. I'm thinking mid-90s, you started making that that music yourself. Because mom was still inspiring you. She's helping you out. She she got, was proud of you when you got your own computer. You saved your money. You got your own computer. You got your own um, the studio at the house. Go ahead. Wait. So go back. So yes. you said the timeline. Okay. So my mom died in 2000. Right. I didn't get the computer. Yeah, I didn't get the computer until um, after she passed away. Oh. My, my daughter was born. So maybe it was after. Oh, so 
after 04 then, I believe. No, it was before that. Yeah, it had to be 2002. It was okay. 2002 I got the computer. Okay. And, um, yeah, before that, though, my mom was the one. She was the one in my corner inspiring me. I won, I had one of the ballad of rappers in my school, um, and I wasn't even tripping about the prize. My mom was telling me, like, just go do it. You know, I was a quiet dude because I got teased so much. So she was like, go ahead and go do that. You know, she gave me a... Um, a group, it's a group thing. I know you. I know you know what I'm talking about. Remember that group, Zane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a groove thing. Yes. Yeah. So she had that. Well, and it, I had a. Is that one was backing you up on the hook? It's a groove thing. Yeah. Don't uh, right, don't mind my right. voice. <laughs> so so my mom would slap that song, and I remember she'd be like, I remember I came home one day. They announced from school. It was like we having a ballad of rappers, and like I said, I was quiet. I got teased. I was bigger. So I knew I was rapping because I wrote every day. I was supposed to be doing schoolwork. I'm in there writing rhymes. Um, so I came home and told mom, I said, mom, I, I, I got a song. I said, I wrote a song, but it's a ballad of rappers coming out. And she looked at me. She said, you don't have music? And I said, no. And this is the time where you would go to uh, um, the good guys and get that tape. Remember that tape? It was a, uh, the, the single tape that had an instrumental on one side and the regular song on one side. Okay, okay. Now I'm getting where you're at because I was thinking when rap first started, you know, uh, the, the rappers would sing in the in the dead parts or in the musical parts, you know, and right. and you would make up raps, uh, it, you know, when the the people stop singing, you got like a long right. instrumental, boom, that's where you come in. But you were getting the, right. the tapes that had full instrumental on one side. Okay, right. that's smart. That's where, my, that's where my jump was, Mama. So, so. She came out the room, I remember, and she was like, put this on, because we had like a Awa double dip, I mean, a double tape deck, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And uh, she put it in there, and she put the beat on, and that beat, that doom, 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 you know, and I heard it, and I'm looking, and she said, she gonna start rapping, and I just killed it, and she looked at me and she said, there you go. And so I remember, man, going to sleep with that in the headphones, in the headphones, I mean, Went to sleep with it and woke up the next morning at lunchtime, went in there and killed it. I didn't care about the prize, man. I had walked off. I went to go call my grandfather and my, my mom and let them know I had won because th them were the two that was pushing me. So I just walked off and I remember them saying, I'm voting for people. And I was like, so-and-so, yay, so-and-so, yay. And they said, Shawan. And the whole school went off. And I remember turning around like, oh, my God. And I ran up there and got my little thing, came back. Then they did it I did it twice and, and won two times. But I got hated on. You know, I got hated on. So it was it, it was just one of them things, man. You know, but that history is really is really a deep, deep history, man. You know, and like I said, I'm gonna share some footage. Um so if you guys are on my um Instagram page, follow me at Catazone, C A D A Z O N E. And I'm going to share some footage of me back in 91. I was a way bigger person, but my flows was like more of like a, uh, what can I say, man? Let's see. Let's go back in the 90s hip hop, bro. Uh, like a Fushnickens type rap. That's how my, my uh, flows were. Hey, now you've taught me a, a new name, Fushnickens. I'm East Coast, man. I, I slip and slide and, and uh, you know, and, and, and like way down south. I'm from Miami. Uh, so, you know. So you know What's so you don't remember the you don't remember the Fushnikas? No, I got to find out who the Fushnikas are. <laughs> okay, look, look you, you you're schooling me. This Robin? old, this old fifty-one year old, almost fifty-two year old, uh, is sitting uh, in front of you. So look, look, you remember when Shaq was rapping? Oh, oh, he had oh where. I don't have that microphone. When 94, I was living in Orlando, Florida. I was working at the edge. Uh, Shaq was still on the magic, and he had, you know I got skills. You know I got skills. I'm working the club there. He grabs my microphone, and he says, here, put this on. CD, boom. You know I got skills. You know I got skills. He stole my microphone. No, he, no, he, he gave it back. He gave it back. But I was like, where'd my mic go? Where'd my mic go? Hey. <laughs> Hey, shout out to Shaq Diesel. Shout out to Lakers too, baby. Shout out to Shaq Diesel. But look, but look, if you heard that back in the day, Shaq had a song called Can You Rock? Can We Rock? What's up, Doc? Can We Rock? I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> well, I'm sure, man. But the, the one he sang for me and, and for the crowd was You Know I Got Skills. <laughs> that's because that's when he just came out with that first album. But the Foosh Nickens is from, Foosh Nickens is what hooked him up. 
Okay. You know what I'm saying? Look that up. That's history. That's history. Okay. Hey, Shaq, uh, hey, give, give, give him props. He was a creative, also putting his directions in different avenues. Uh, so if you got. And he also, yeah. he also, what people don't know, is went platinum with them albums. Yeah. So not only was, yeah, not only was Shaq, you know what I'm saying, uh, won rings with, with the Lakers, you know what I'm saying? He went platinum. You know, I didn't know he went platinum, but my goodness, yeah, man. man, why not? Why not, man? You know, if you're going to, if Shaq's going to put an album out, you better go out and buy it just for, just for history's <laughs> sake, just for a keepsake. He, had, he actually had skills and I found out, I just recently found out that he wrote all his own shit too. You know what I'm saying? So, That's hey, fantastic. That's I'm fantastic. You don't know what, but got, got game and can, and can write, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So. Yeah, and for people that are just listening to the podcast version, you're wearing a Lakers shirt right there representing. Now, I, I still don't know exactly what part of California. You, I'm guessing Southern California somewhere, but where, where no, is it? Ventura? Bay I'm from the Bay Area. Oh, I'm you're in the, the North. California. Uh, okay. Uh, if you know E-40 and Matt Dre. Uh, I know that. Uh, I know those names, and I know I've played them. I had a 90s hip-hop party uh, uh, just a couple weeks ago that was playing some of that, you know. Yeah. And that's exactly where I'm from. Right, I grew up right down the street from E40. Um, matter of fact, used to walk by E40 and um, be getting them all the time. And my mom used to babysit Mac Dre, so I'm pretty much I'm <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> Man, it is in the blood. You could not help but be a rapper. Now you said you were a quiet person when you were in school, uh, but what what made you break out of the box? Was it the that was the okay? I I, I remember watching Kid and Play. Uh, their house party movie, movie, and that's how uh, was it? Chris Reed, I think he was kid, uh, or was it Chris Martin? I know Chris, Chris, uh, one of the Chris's. Well, he was uh, yeah. tr getting himself out of trouble in jail, and he started rapping, and that's how he got himself out of trouble. Was that what got you out of out of the bullying, out of the trouble? Yeah, um, and like I said, it also yeah, that's exactly what got me out the bullying and all the trouble. Because man, I, I snapped. I ain't going to even lie. I snapped. And I mean, you go through certain situations, but that was one of the main things. And when I got older going through life, um, like I said, you can hear the, if you, if you listen to all my albums, you can hear the transition. Um, at first, bro, I didn't even want to cuss. My sister Kiva would tell you that I did not want to cuss. And she was like, you need to cuss. Get your point across. So I was more of that lover type rapper. Um, but bro, when you go through situations in your life, uh, it changes you. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't be out here cussing people out and killing people and doing things like that. No. But I create my own world. I can go in there and say and do what I feel. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's how it started. So, yeah, man, it's crazy. It's a journey, bro. Well, and, that's, <laughs> and that is the you, that is the journey of hip hop. Back in the 80s, yeah. none of the guys cursed. They wanted that airplay. They wanted to get yeah. out there and, 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 you know, the, the hey, the, the fat boys and, and Heavy D, my favorite rapper of all time. Uh, you know, they, yeah. had the, they had the raps that were, that were clean as a whistle. They got their point across. They, they told stories here and there. But they were, yeah. they were uh, you know, rated G, rated PG at the most. And, and it wasn't until Two Live Crew came out in the mid to late 80s and, and just changed that all up to, <laughs> okay. and, and me being in South Florida, yeah, I, I know when the two live crew got arrested by Sheriff Nick Navarro oh, in I Fort know, Lauderdale. Oh, I know you. I know you in Florida. Oh yeah, you know what's up. Um, <laughs> two live crew. Find out. I found out too. Some of two live crew was from um, the Bay Area as well. Um, because I remember. I'm gonna tell you something. I remember. Here goes another story. This Please. is something I remember. I ain't never told this on the air at all. So you the first one to get this one because I, I just remembered. Just you and so me. Had, Come on. You know the Juneteenth, you know the Black Family Days that we had together on uh, in June. Um, so we had one in the Crest. Um, the Crest is where um, uh, Mac Dre is from. Mac Maul, um, Jay Diggs, these cats. Um, like I said, these these are, these are my people. You know what I'm saying? I love all of Vallejo. But um, this is like '80. Put it like this: Paul Revere's ride had just came out. Okay, Beastie Boys, got it. So that was my favorite song when it came out. That's all I rap. Like me and my sister would go beatbox it. We do this, you know what I'm saying, on the table, you know, beatboxing all that. So I remember my family was selling food at the Black, the Black Family Day, and there was a big old stage. And back then, when I was a little kid, man, like I think I was like seven, five, six, seven, 
And I didn't care about us. I didn't care who was looking. I just wanted to be that center of attention. So the, I went to the DJ and I asked the DJ, I'm like, man, can I rap? He was like, you don't rap? I said, come on, man, let me get up there. So he said, when I, what song you want to rap? I said, Paul Revere's Rod. So it just came out. He put it up. Everybody was out there on the lawn. I jumped up there just spitting it. And all these people was running up like, who that? Who that? And these four guys came up to me. And they were like, dude, you raw. You were good. You were good. I said, thank you. Thank you. And um, dude said, I said, who, who are you? And he was like, we're two live crew. Didn't even know, man. What? <laughs> Didn't even know. Out at the cameo in, in uh, Miami, uh, I'm with this tall blonde named DJ Hannah. A real like a uh, Swedish Scandinavian blonde, and uh, this Wait, guy. Are you talking about DJ Hannah to be over in Ibiza? Well, she DJ Hannah, man, she she's in Miami right now, and that's where I met her. Sure. And we we're at this club, and this guy, uh, you know, behind us, he introduced himself, and he goes, "Hey, my name's Sean." He wasn't introducing himself to me; he was introducing himself to him, to her, Sean Combs. You know, back before he started getting big. Hey, hey, my name's Sean. And I was like, huh, okay. And I didn't know who that was at the time, early 90s. I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. funny how you meet people, man, that, 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 that cross your path, and then they become big. Like Pitbull, I interviewed him before he was Pitbull. I mean, well, he was, he was Pitbull, but he wasn't huge he was still mr 305 now he's mr worldwide and i've interviewed him on a miami radio station man uh, wait out what's that did he have cornrows in his head then oh, no he was already bald by that time you know mr mr 305 you know oh okay nice, nice to meet you hey don't get it twisted i saw a hey, miami uh trick daddy trick come on daddy. now trina Hey, I listened to all of that, bro. I grew up to that too. Slip and slide. Uh, come on now. Salute to y'all out there. Cause, yeah. Because y'all part of my journey too, as well, dude. Me coming up listening to all that and Trick Daddy was the thuggest motherfucker out there, dude. It, it's some happy music, though, man. You know, and it's so fast and 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 like uh, who's the, who's that? Oh man, it was like Busta Rhymes is a fast rapper. I mean, but you know, your speed. It's it's nice and easy, man. I, I think it was uh, Jay Z. They had a commercial that said, "Slow it down." You know, you you don't have to go so fast. You don't have to go so slow. Just get that story uh, out in the speed you can. You don't, but the whole thing about that that speeding up and slowing down. Because when you hear my um my song, "How a Nigga Get Down," that second verse, the first sixteen bars of that is me. Because you have to. Um, this, it, 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 it songs speak to everybody in a different way. Mm -hmm. So if Jay Z was writing a song, or if say we was all in the studio, me say me, Jay Z, Rick, Rick Ross, Meek Mill, and Ti was all in the studio, right? I want to hear that, that album. <laughs> I, you put it out in the universe. I want to hear that album. <laughs> that would be dope. But I put, yeah, put that in the universe, bro. I appreciate that. Yes, <laughs> but you would hear a whole bunch of different styles. So we come from different different areas. You know what I'm saying? T.I. in Atlanta, Rick Ross from out that way. You know what I'm saying? And then Meek Mills and then all of that. We all have a different style. So what I hear is it's different to the ear. You know what I'm saying? So, and what the heart uh, spits out and what your soul spits out. So I might have to, you know, say something slow just to get my point across and then I'll be like, nah, nah. You know what I'm saying? I just feel it like that. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's whether you're firing, if you're you're firing that Glock, doom, doom, or you got that that Mac Ten, send it all to them. Yeah, get their attention, man, any way you can, and it's whatever you feel is how the, it's what's going to dictate that flow. Uh, that man, it, you're giving the people gems, man. Just go at your own speed, and whatever comes out of your head and goes in, you know, whatever's in your head comes out your mouth at whatever speed it needs to be at whatever speed it was. That's the speed it needed to be. You heard it. I mean, people turn like, uh, for, for instance, I, I took, uh, when I just did Portrait of the King, like I said, Portrait of the King right now is on Spotify. Um, like I said, look up Catazone, a.k.a. J. Sativa, it's on Spotify. When I did Portrait of the King, this is the first time in my life that I took advice from somebody on how I could write in and uh, lay my flow down. Mm -hmm. I've never done that before. On the song Boss, it was a, a total different way. It's a song I did called Talk That Shit. And the Talk That Shit song, I wrote it a total different way 
But if it wasn't for uh, my boy Swish, he came to the house and was like, Shawan, just try something different. And I was like, all right, fuck it. You know, and I did. And that song, oh my God, Talk That Shit is the, one of the dopest songs I did. The beat, the flow, oh my God. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes if y'all listening out there, you do have to take some advice. You know what I'm saying? Take in consideration, um, not just what you hear, just what the masses hear, what the other people might hear outside of that, outside of your circle. You know what I'm saying? Well, you've already alluded that you got the equipment at home. You can make yourself a decent demo, but it takes it takes you giving it to somebody else, and it's hard to give up your baby to a to another doctor and say, "Here, could you you know see if you can put this you know get this mixed to get this mastered, uh, see what needs to be taken out." You have to have a discerning ear because Catazone is not just one person; he is a group of people. That, ha- that has to help put those those songs out. Are you putting those first initial ones? I'm guessing that you did primarily yourself, but do you have a, a crew that, that, that you know, a, a recording studio? Because you say you're in the studio right now, and it's probably yes. like right next door there. Yep, I'm, I'm sitting in the, in the lobby right now. In the lobby. Um, sitting here in the lobby of the studio. Um, it's Safe House Studios in Napa, California. That's that's uh, MOS's uh, studio, main studio. Um, actually, I have two of them. Okay. Um, this is home, like basic home studios. I have um because I gotta when I leave and I'm up here so much, I gotta make sure that if I got something in my head, I can get it out. So I got that studio. Also got laptop studios. If I get in the car and I gotta record something, it's all it's, it's crazy, man. <laughs> no, I'm sure you know anybody who's got a smartphone can record at least their uh, you know whatever thoughts are coming out of your head. Uh, you oh right. I got I got a memo I got to think about this because if I don't write it down I'm gonna forget it by the time I get to my destination. So you got that? That's great. I'm so old school with it though, bro. I'll, I'll walk into the store if I if I know I'm writing a rhyme and I got some errands to go run. I would walk into the store with a pencil in my ear and my book folded in my back pocket. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm, I'm all about it. But you said about a team, too. The team is me and my best friend, Sarah Violet. Now, Sarah, dude, man, when I first jumped off doing this music, I knew that, that things was going to change um, from out the trunk to the computer. So we, man, we would sit down. I mean, I mean, she took all her 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 time, man, and just got me out there to make sure that I was doing stuff right, make sure my, my, my writing was right, make sure the people was getting there, make sure I was um, uh, getting in, um, into, in a certain uh, categories to uh, uh, put my stuff on the radio, you know what I'm saying, even opportunities. If it wasn't for her working and over time doing this stuff, you know what I'm saying, I wouldn't, been, you know, I wouldn't be where I am. But, yeah, it's a team effort, man, for real. I mean, when I first started out, I was like, do everything myself, you know, just go, 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 go. But certain things you can't do. You need uh, representation. You also need a proper representation to, uh, you know, for, for professional use. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can just come to you and be like, um, I'm rapping. You know, mm-hmm. that's easy. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying? so you have to you have to have that. And shout out to my publicist too, DJ Immortal. DJ Immortal is my publicist. So this is how we got this connection. You see what I'm saying? So it's a team. Team effort. I'm well, blessed. You already alluded to it before. You see the evolution. Your first albums were not your best albums. Yes, you were putting stuff out there, but they they weren't polished like they could have been. Uh, and you right. you probably could have gone back and, and and taken some of that and redone it, remixed it, remastered. A lot of times, man, what is it? Uh, what did I? A lot of times, art is not finished. It's abandoned. You know. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. When do you know something's done? You're right. You're right. I, I still had a master's. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm about to I'm about to re-release, um, I think, Hood Funk 2 again. OK. Um, but I think, I, matter of fact, it's already on Audio Mac. It's on Audio. Matter of fact, if I release, I'm just, I, I'm sharing certain certain clips of these songs so people can understand. You know what I'm saying? The evolution. Mm-hmm. So on my Instagram page, you'll see them. But you can go to Audio Mac right now and pick them up. You can go to SoundCloud and pick them up. Um, all four of them. All four of them, because I got one through four Hood Funks. So yeah. please enjoy that. But yeah, yeah. If you're following you, uh, Catazone on on Facebook or, or Instagram, any you got those little clips. Catastrophic is out there. Uh, hood for the hood for funk funked up is out there. This little little mm-hmm. tidbits, uh, uh, you know, for the people to give them a little. Uh, was it a funk funk infection? 
What's oh, fuck injection. Fuck That's injection. Fuck. I read that wrong. Excuse me. You know, but there's little tidbits there, and, and there you are. <laughs> How timely, you know, with all these uh, immunizations going out. You got a, a syringe full of something, you know. Was that drinky Ooh. drink? Was that orange That's drink? Fine. That, that, what would you say? There's a little drink in there or something. What, what's that? What's the in, injection? Dude, that's funny that you said that, cause, cause that was okay. So that that photo, um, my boy, he was like, man, we gotta take these pictures, you know, for your album cover. I'm like, okay, so ah, I need to get a syringe. I need to get a syringe. So I remember going, <laughs> I remember going to Kaiser, bro, and uh, they had them syringes, just a couple of syringes just sitting there, and I just picked one up, and then I was like. Well, we need something to put in there. I couldn't find no green juice, nothing like that. We went to uh, Carl's Jr. <laughs> and I got some food drink, and I was like, fuck it. <laughs> 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 that's pretty timely man this uh, this whole coronavirus got everybody messed up and now people are getting injections and hopefully things are getting back to normal yeah, that, is, that is crazy bro i didn't even put that together bro you just put some light to that um <laughs> that was funny bro but everybody i'm glad you even point that out because my daughter will point that out all the time daddy i remember when you got that juice okay you know what I'm saying? Well, that's but good, yeah, man. No. Now, you, now you're a family man. That's got to change the, your rapping style, the way you think about the world. You know, it's got to change the whole your whole outlook on life once you become a, a, no. a father. You know? No, 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 bro. Look, you would think the opposite, right? No, nah, my shit didn't got worse, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I still, because like I'm at that point, I'm older now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I used to have to uh, censor myself on certain shit I said because my daughter was a baby. And I knew for a fact if all my music was out there, she going to hear it. You know what I'm saying? So I told her this is who daddy is. Mm -hmm. um, this is what I do. Her mom knows. You know what I'm saying? They love me for who I am. And I tell her, you know, a lot of stuff, you know, like if I'm talking about female or something like that, I'm like, you know what I'm If I say bitch, that could be about a dude, right? And she's like, yeah, I understand it, daddy. I get it. So I had to let her... Let, like put it out there for her to understand it because she listened to my music i found out uh, not too long ago she came out rapping some of my stuff and she listens to my music and she even wrote the hook for get money help help me write the hook for get money right around to smoke so she know what i'm doing <laughs> well that's good you 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 not only have a daughter you have a, a collaborator you know somebody that yeah. you could bounce ideas off of and she's gonna tell you for sure i got a 15 year old daughter she's gonna tell you for sure whether you're whack I guess is the right. the word for the day, or if you're uh, Miggity Mac, you know, right. <laughs> as right. uh, as uh, was it uh, Criss Cross used to say, either you're yeah, whack Miggity. or you're Miggity right. Mac. <laughs> right, you're right. It's, she really, I mean, I'm blessed to have that too because she. I remember I, I just got through doing the um, um the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. It was the uh, telethon for uh, Canada, which DJ Immortal um. Uh, hosted and I won the uh, hip hop icon of the year award. So shout out to them again. Shout out to Outlaw Radio FM. You know what I'm saying? But I remember shouting her out and I came home and when I was doing a song, I shouted her out and she she actually cried. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So she's like my biggest fan, man. I'm so blessed to have that, man. Like really, I am blessed to have it because she grew up all around her daddy rap. So she know. Well, that's good, man. See, and, and you know, as, as <laughs> sometimes I'll come home from a party and I'll be DJing in front of 100 people, 200 people, 1,000 people, whatever, and I come home and they take me right back to earth, man. Uh, my wife will say, uh, hey, uh, take out the garbage. Hmm. Everybody hey, just told me how great not, I was. <laughs> you still got a life, brother. I mean, it don't matter how big you get. You know, and the, <laughs> plus that's what keeps you grounded, too. You know you got something to go home to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's unconditional love, you know, because this world, bro, <laughs> especially in the music business, you know, they love you. One minute you hear, the next you go on one minute, they love you, next they hate you, oh, you know, yeah. but that's unconditional. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, I, OK, we've been talking about a lot of things, man, and and learning about the beginnings of Catazone and and finding out where you where you got your start and and, and the, the evolution of the records. Now, yeah, I, I was thinking about SoundCloud DJs. You could look at their first tracks and you could tell that they were, you know, might have been made on an iPhone, uh, iPhone 3 way back when, and that was their first rap. But then as things progress and as your team, uh, you start to, to build a team, you, you start 
to build people that that will uh, will help you get better and better and start to believe in you. Got a zone. That that's when you start getting big. Is you have people that believe in what you're doing. And I'm listening to your raps. And like I said, the first thing that get, that that got me was the was the '80s feel to it. I, I had a little girl. Uh, one time at a at a party, it was an '80s party, and she came up to me. She goes, "How come there's no new '80s music?" I had to look at her. Come on, man. <laughs> come on. <laughs> the '80s are <laughs> '80s are done. Now people, you know, want to sound like the '80s. You know, want to get but that you know, feel. I'm glad you brought that up too, man. You got some good points, man. On Hood Funk Two, no, I think it was Hood Funk Three. Mm-hmm. There was a song. Okay, I grew up to the Blow Monkeys. Um, in the 80s. I like pop music too. My favorite group was Wham. George Michaels is like my favorite dude. He got his voice, his vocals. I don't care what nobody say. The boy is raw. What's raw? So, mm-hmm. R.I.P. But I took a song from the Blow Monkeys and I did it. The Digging Your Scene song and I had to rap to that. And people dug that song, bro. It was crazy. I didn't know people was really going to get to it. I just did it for myself. But people was like, oh, that's the Blow Monkeys. I know that. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'll do some crazy shit, man. Like if I hear it and it's a slap, cause man, I'm trying to work on um, everything she wants right now. What? You know what I'm saying? I, that's my song. So I'm trying to get something, something there. Um, I, the eighties is just, uh, that's where we came up to because we didn't have BET. We had MTV and then BET came about. Yes. Yes. MTV used to play videos uh, for all the kids out there under a certain age. You know, Ed Lover and and uh, Dr. Dre. No, not that Dr. Dre. The other Dr. Dre used to do uh, yo MTV raps. And that's where I got my uh, my first. You got to do the Ed Lover dance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I remember Day La Days, De La Soul came out. And just, uh, oh man, that, MTV, I miss music videos. I do. And I play music video parties when I'm doing my parties. But uh, oh, bro, are, are you doing music videos as well? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I got music videos as well on YouTube. Go okay. look up Catazone, um, AKA J Sativa. Boss is out there. Uh, Miracle Whip is out there from the new album I just dropped. Um, views are up 20,000, 11,000. Uh, go check them out. You know, run them views up. I appreciate y'all, man. Yeah, I'm out there on YouTube. I got a big YouTube page, too. Well, excellent, so, yeah. man. I mean, I know you're in the studio. I hope I'm not costing you money. Uh, you say it's a, it, it is your MOS studios, your own personal studios. Very good. Mm-hmm. Now, are you, okay, are you producing other people as well, uh, as well as yourself? No, but I plan on start uh, to produce for uh, people this year. I'm planning on that um, because I've been producing so much, man, just trying to get it right and get my flavor down first. So I am planning on producing, um, but me first. You know what I'm saying? If you know me first. Yeah, but, I mean, you got this studio sitting there. You can't do it all the time yourself. And sometimes when we get to a certain age, we st- we think, well, maybe I ought to slow down a little bit. Let somebody else right. use that studio. You know, get right. it, make right. a couple bucks that way and help somebody yep. out while you're at it. So, yeah. I am, right. I am going to start doing I mean, not just right now, but when I was telling you about the bass coming in yes. that I wanted. So that's why I was talking about that bass because it's going to be a point to where I'll be like a two short Still around, like an E40, just pop in and out, pop out. Then I might do an album for, you know, I might just do that. But I really do want to start producing for people and get my credits up and get my name out there. You know what I'm saying? So, because I do uh, admire a lot of producers, you know, Rick Rock, um, shoot, a lot, a lot of producers, the Otter Noise, I mean, Organized Noise. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of producers, man, that I, that I look up to, Dr. Dre, of course, you know what I'm saying, Battle Cat. So I'm, I am trying to just learn the basics and do things like that and get, you know, get ready to put something out for somebody. I don't want to give them no, no weak shit. Well, you already alluded to it. You said it twice. You, you're going to get the bass. And the bass line was really what, what got you. And it's a groove thing. Doom, do doom, do doom. The, the rhythm section is what makes the song. Yeah, you know, the, the, uh, the vocals and the lead guitar, that's one thing. But without that rhythm section, setting that tone, Oh, that song's going nowhere. So it's a group well, effort. I, yeah, I'm telling you, bro. So it's all, and that's the thing about my hood punk, man. The bass has to be right for me to even write to it, man. If the bass is right, so like you'll hear them songs and you you'll understand. You know, I took the Bart Cage beat, um, "Move Your Boogie Body" mm. on hood on the the beginning of Hood Funk Three. Yeah, and it's 
bass that boom, 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 boom. You know, ding, 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 ding. that's what I started writing to. Well, even one of the songs that you had, I'm listening to, and it says if your if your speakers ain't bumping or something like that, I, I can't remember exactly what it was. But uh, that's get money right, rhyme the smoke. That song came from the controllers, and um, that's the one I told you. My I was telling you, my daughter helped me write, helped me write that hook. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So just the, just the beginning, just the beginning. She didn't cuss. She was just in there doing her homework and start writing, start saying something. And I said, what did you say? And I went in there and recorded it real quick. But uh, yeah, you hear that bass line. That's what pulled me into that song. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You made yourself a little collaborator. And you, uh, what was it? Sarah? It, does she sing for you too? Is it Sarah? Your best friend? On her phone too? Yeah. No, yeah, she's just like a one-time thing. That's her mom. That's my daughter's mom. Aww. So that's kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's nice, man. You got a little family going on there. They're helping you uh, achieve your goals, and in turn, it's their goals. And everybody gets in that, you know, gets a little piece of the action. And you're creating things out of out of thin air. It, it impresses me to no end. Someone who could, you know, have something in their head, put it out, and and create something out of thin air, man. It, it's so impressive. I mean, me, I, 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 I've i been recording stuff. I, I do commercials. I do podcasts. I, I do DJing. I play other people's stuff. I'll be playing Catazone on Friday night, you know, for sure. Uh, you know, I'll play some of your music, and people will come up to me and go, what is that? Well, like back in the 80s when I first started, I would rip the labels off of my new album, my new records. I got this new LL Cool J, put it down there. Who is that? Man, it sounds like LL Cool J. Let me look at that record. Nope. It, I, I tore the, uh, the the label off and I put B1, you know, just to kind of give me an idea who it was, <laughs> you know? Right. That's dope. That's, that's the way, dope, that's the way it was. Fresh beats. And then, of course, I'm going to promote the whoever the singer is because the other DJs want to get those fresh beats, man. You know, but uh, are you – now, you, you mentioned Fruity Loops. Um, my daughter is doing some kind of a, a vocaloid type of thing that looks like Fruity Loops. I guess it's FL Studio now. Are you doing stuff with that, or is it all live music? No, nah, mine is uh, just straight. It's it. FL Studio, FL Studio, um, yeah. FL Studio, and Pro Tools, and you know stuff like that. Just still analog and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? We still running the media stuff through the computer and doing all that. It, I love the sound because that's the way the sound is changing now. But I love to do some live things. That's why I want to get that bass and try to incorporate some of that stuff in there. I got a few bass players I deal with. Um, uh, my boy Bobo from Skunk Punk, I deal with him. You know, so it's 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 coming together. You know what I'm saying? It's good. The team's getting bigger. The Catazone team is getting bigger, a.k.a. Jay Sativa. All right, uh, give the people yep. one more time mm-hmm. as we wind this thing down uh, how how to get a hold of you. Uh, you've already given, you know, I've already given word. You put in Catazone on any Google, on any search engine, all your stuff's yes. going to pop up. But how do you want people to connect with you? Man, you can connect with me on Instagram, uh, Facebook, um, you can, like I said, if you want to find my music, it's on Spotify. It's on Apple Music, uh, ReverbNation.com, um, YouTube Music, YouTube, um, everywhere um, music media is sold. You know what I'm saying? Just just follow your boy. I got music out. Like I said, the new album out right now, uh, Portrait of a King. It's on Spotify right now. It's on Apple Music. It's everywhere. Please go run it up. Go to YouTube. Look at those videos. You know what I'm saying? Just support me. I appreciate y'all. Show me love. I'll show y'all love back. You know what I'm saying? So much blessings yeah. and positivity to everyone out there. Well, Catazone, you already said that you you performed live. You you won that that uh, contest back in the early '90s. Uh, you know, have you been performing live since then? Uh, and I, I, you know, you already said that you did uh, DJ Immortals Outlaw Radio Canada uh, charity function that you did recently. But have you perform been performing out in the world as uh, Catazone or as a, as part of maybe a a group of of, of uh, performers? Yes, yes. I started off with a group called um, Infinity. Well, before that, no, no, it was right. I started off with a group called Infinity, and I, that's why I got my first one jumping off in Richmond, California, and in Vallejo. That's why I was just like a little local thing. And then after that, I kind of branched out, and I that radio was popping in, in Vallejo, California, and they would throw shows, and I threw a record release party. Then I threw my own shows, and then after that, it kind of was going down, and we moved from Vallejo because it was kind of saturated in Vallejo. 
So I moved from Vallejo and moved to Fairfield. And from then I started dealing with um, Sacramento. And the first person I hit in Sacramento was uh, the first lady, Lisa. She has her own podcast and she's a DJ as well. And she was throwing shows and me and her connect really, really well. And she would throw a lot of shows. And then I started getting more shows out that way. So I did one with um, with San Quinn. Um, I did one in Vallejo before that. I think yeah, right before that was with Turf Talk um, from E40's camp. And um, I just kept it moving from there. The show was lighter then because I was like 20. I think the last show I had did. Ooh, last show I think I did was like 2017. What? About 2017. What's going on? Well, I, like, Did you get a day job or what, man? <laughs> What's going oh, yeah. on? Yeah, bro. I had to go work. Things changed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Your family man now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had family. Plus, the music wasn't. You know, it was my thing. And plus, it's my. It's a hobby. Plus, it's a. It's a. It's a business now. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? It's been a business, but um, it wasn't an umbrella. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had to go do what I had to do. I had to hustle. I had to do what I had to do. Get back on top. Plus, I went back to school because I was. I'm a, a certified trainer. You know, uh, train people to get big. I lost weight. Um, I lost like 100, 200 pounds on my own. Uh, and and yeah, became a yeah, personal just, trainer. That's fantastic, yeah. man. Are you working out of a gym? Or are you working out of your house or what? Uh, we out the house now in Cali because everything shut down for COVID. Yeah. 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 So I'm, at, I'm in the house. I got the own little gym in the house. Do a little cardio stuff in the house. A little safer there. You know what I'm saying? I still do that. Um but yeah, man, I had other things I did. I wanted to do because I wanted to. I wanted to do something different. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I'm a rapper, but I want to uh, show people how to change their life without having to, you know, pay all this money out. And you know, because the guys told me how to change my life, so I want to spread that love. So I was just helping people lose weight. And I, uh, my, one of my best things was I saved somebody's life. She told me that um, she had a heart attack and um, she had to lose weight. And I remember sitting with this lady, man, and just crying with her. And um, as, a, as a white lady, I remember sitting with her and I said, you can do this. You know, and I told her, I told her what I went through and I said, you can do this. I said, so don't trip. And she came back about three months later and she had lost all this weight. And she said, my diabetes are gone. And she said, you know, my heart condition is good. And she gave me a hug and she cried again. So that was my thing. Those are my rewards, bro. Well, you let know? people know how to get a hold of that since that's your that's your money job that people can can give you money to 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 allow you to do the rapping uh, job, the hip hop job. So how do people get a hold of you for personal training and and, and in what area are you serving? Well, what I well, I'm not really the thing about the the personal training thing is I really didn't jump into it like that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It was just bodybuilding and getting right cuz my main after that, after I got my certification, I was like, "Okay, I got to hit these stages." So I got to look right before I hit these stages because I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking more of a money standpoint. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Look, you look right. You know what I'm saying? The girls are going to look at you. You know, the girls uh, spend a lot of money. They spend more money than the, than the, than the guys do. You know, it's been, it's been polls that sold that. Yeah, so the I girls make, spend a lot of the guys' look. money. <laughs> right. Hey, whoever money you need, just give it to me. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So. That's why I did that. That's why I wanted to do that. But I mean, if people call me and they have, uh, like I said, you could get at me on Facebook, or Instagram. If you really have questions about that, I could tell you what to do and how to do it. But the whole thing about it, when I train people, is I tell them, like, I can tell you how to do it. But you're going to fail two or three times. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like, that's like anything, like this music thing. That's like cooking for the first time. That's like a job. You're not going to get everything right the first time. So, I tell them just be uh, be optimistic about it and just be realist- realistic, you know. Well, me being a, a you know a fat boy from way back, uh, you know, I I appreciate someone who will take the time out. Yeah, you throw them a couple bucks, but they're going to come and and help you weight train, help you help you to get on that treadmill, give you that inspiration. So if that's a, a, a an avenue that Catazone wants to go, maybe you can help some people. And you've already uh, alluded that you've helped at least one uh, lady. To, to lose all, all the weight she needs to and get rid of her diabetes. So, uh, cat his own, you know, be a personal trainer, man. Be, be Terry Crews, you know. I can see, see you getting big and helping other people get big as well and being a hip-hop artist as well at the same time. So, do it all, man. You know? Like, I tell people, like, you know, hey, like your life, man. Life, life goes on. You know what I'm saying? You can still do what you want to do and, and stay in love with it. Like I'm a big ass kid too, bro. Like a lot of people don't know that. It's, it's, dude. I'm a big kid. I collect action figures. I read comic books. I love Marvel movies. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm into that deep. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's what oh, yeah. I'm into. Oh. I'm like a hood nerd. I tell everybody that I'm a hood nerd. Oh, wait, wait. I, th- I think I'm. I think I'm wearing it. I have a a, a Comic Con shirt underneath my Radio What shirt, and there's Come there's on, Bat, Batman. There's Batman yeah, Comic Con way. My sh- <laughs> like like me and my cousins, we connect through that. We've always connected through that since we were little kids, man, in the '80s. Because I'm the one that started with the comic cards. So in the '90s, <laughs> in, I mean, in the '80s. Cause my cousins, they weren't they weren't born to like the end of the eighties, early nineties. You know what I'm saying? So they start following me, and then when they started following me, boy, they then took over. Now they got all the X Men shit and all that. I got I just got Spawn and you know um, WWF figures and Hot Wheels and things like that, man. You just don't know what's going to inspire you, man. I mean, I was collecting comic books from way back, and then these movies come out, and you're like. I, I I got a whole stack of X Men uh, and and Captain America and Iron Man and Thor and right. I, I got I, I right. got a whole stack of those books uh, sitting in a closet somewhere you know but I think I've lost them over the years all, all those different books sure. but you know sadly but yeah they they've inspired me over the years as well and and, and oh. you know but ah uh, oh, it's good but getting to him. yeah. I'm one of them dudes, man, too. That's like you and looking at me and the way I talk, the way I rap, the way I do my shit, dude. You would not expect me to be one of them dudes like to go see a Marvel movie and criticize that shit hard. If it didn't do, if it didn't do like the comic book, because I know comic books. You know what I'm saying? So I'm that dude to be up in there thugged out, you know, with the hood shit on. And I come out, man, that was weak, dude. I know so and so didn't do so and so. Thanos didn't do that. But you know what I'm saying? I'm that dude. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, you'll rip it apart, man. But, uh, yeah. you know, those movies made a billion dollars. So I think all walks of life, they're, they're appealing to quite a few people that you wouldn't think, oh, you're not a geek. You're not a nerd. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. We all are at heart. Super. Let me hear a new comic book coming out. I'm going to get that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, every time I go to Target, um, <laughs> I'm straight to the toy section. And what are you going to the section? All right, man. Well, shoot. I, I, I you know, I, I, I play video games online as well. I got my Xbox controller sitting right here. Uh, I'll probably play a, a little. F- What's that? You got a PS4? I'll be playing Fortnite uh, a little bit later on on uh, Steam uh, on on uh, Epic. Uh, so, uh, I, do you have a PS4? I do have a PS4, but I don't play it th- that much. I usually do all the computer games. Uh, PS on PC. If you get on PS4, follow your boy Catazone. I'm on there. Catazone. He is branded, man. And I'm Keys Dan, all branded. It's good, man. Get your brand out there. Catazone. All right, let's wind this thing up so you can get over to the the, the recording studio portion of the uh, of the and uh, keep putting that good music out there. I don't want this to be the, the last time that we talk. As time progresses, maybe another half a year or year down the line, you got something new to promote. Please, by all means, come on back and we'll chit chat some more and find out more about the life of Catazone and how you came to be. Ah, okay, I usually finish these things off with last words for the people. Now, you can give shout outs as well before you give the last words for the people. If you have anybody that, that you haven't mentioned yet, uh, give some shout outs. But the last words for the people could be something that you heard a long time ago, could be uh, some words to live by, or it could just be whatever pops into your head. At this moment in time, Catazone, last words for the people. Yo, last words for the people are, without no struggle, there's no progress. Um, you got to go through it to get to, you got to go through the rain, man, to get to the rainbow. You know what I'm saying? You got to go through that storm to get to a bright day. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to all my people. I love y'all. Shout out to, to my boy DJ Immortal for hooking us up. Shout out to Use Keys Dan. I appreciate you, my brother. Shout out to everybody that's supporting Catazone. Please go run that up. Go get that Catazone foot. Watch that Catazone footage. Follow Catazone on IG, like I said, Spotify, and all multi music media as well. I love y'all so much. Appreciate your time. Well, there you have it, party people. Catazone. Oh man, it was good talking to that young man. I say young man. He's he's probably just a little bit younger than me. 
<laughs> I'm class of 86. I think he's class of 91. So, yeah, we chewed a lot of the same dirt. He, maybe I chewed it a little bit earlier than he did. But, uh, yeah, we, he's got some inspirations. And, and you just it, – we alluded to it at the end of the podcast. You never know what's going to inspire you. Uh, you know, people like a whole lot of different things. And it comes out creatively in a lot of people as, you know, a various amount of things. So, I mean – Ah, it, 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 I'm in awe. I'm in awe of people that have these minds that can think of things and then spit them out in such a way that it, it's interesting to people. It's interesting to me, man. And so follow Catazone on his various uh, social medias and you know Spotify and iTunes and all that kind of thing. Find his music. Hey, support him, which means buy that music okay uh, at, at the very least put it on your spotify playlist and uh let it roll man maybe he'll get a tenth of a penny every time it plays is it even that much is spotify even paying that much to the people hey at least they're paying something i know people have had to had to change their their ways from selling albums selling record albums like uh well back with his grandma uh, grandfather and his mama was buying albums and myself and then uh, it has a change over to digital media now. So uh, you, you're trying to, trying to find different ways to, to, to make money on, on the things you love. So he's a, he's a good family man, and he's putting that music out there to the world, putting his ideas, putting his thoughts to words, uh, pen to, uh, pencil to paper. Now he do, he does it old school. I'm talking about you know using your, your recording uh, method on your phone whenever you get an idea. Nope, he's got a... A little pad in his back pocket and a pencil in his ear. So whenever he's thinking of, of something, walking through the grocery store, he, write it on down. That's a, that, that's old school. That's the way you, that, that man, hey, whatever it takes to get that creative juice flowing and out into the world, you do it. Catazone, thank you so much for being on the podcast, What Makes You Famous. Hey, and if you, now I'm turning my attention to you, would like to tell your story, I encourage you to give me a call, 501-470-6386, or email info at radiowhat.com. That's it for me. It's Keys Dan, radiowhat.com, djlittlerock.com. Peace. I'm out of here.